Hello everyone, this is Nova and I'm doing a VR to the tag only 10 indie decks. This tag was created by Thea at Garden Goddess Tarot and Meg at Rose Honey Ritual. And the links to their original videos will be in my description box. The first one, my first pick, is the Banksy Tarot. This deck is out of print right now. I know that Meg said that we cannot bring out of print decks to this VR, but they are printing a second edition, so technically it's not out of reach. And let me just show you this incredible deck. These are the backs. It has this red shiny gilding that usually we don't like. Look at this, Banksy himself came out. Um, but for this particular deck, it works because of these two hearts in the back. It just works with the rest of the deck. It makes it even more controversial. This is the fool. You know which Disney reference this is. And she has spray cans in her basket. This deck features the politically charged and controversial words and artworks of the UK street artist known as Banksy who kept his identity anonymous. This was the Princess Leia. Fuck this imperialist bullshit as high priestess with a spray can. She just wrote this on a wall. And this is the high priestess. This deck is... I mean, you just have to decide for yourself. If you guys want me to do a 4K flip through of this deck, let me know. This is the emperor. This deck is very special to me because I appreciate street art and graffiti and hip-hop culture very much and Banksy is one of my favorites of all time. I like hip-hop culture because of its controversial point of view on everything but also I love the music, I love the arts, the street art the style, the mindset. Look at this Wheel of Fortune. The cool thing about this deck is that this artwork by itself has so much meaning. And then putting this art as the justice card adds another layer of profoundness to it. The choices for the tarot associations are so darn interesting. Look at the hanged man. You will notice that the shadowier cards are looked at from a more positive point of view. This is the death card. And the lighter cards, the more positive cards, are approached from a more negative angle. Each card makes you think. I have never done a reading with this deck. To me, this is more a collector's item. But I do want to try to do a reading. Like, look at this. This image by itself is so meaningful. But then associating it with the judgment card makes it even deeper. Let me know, guys, if you want a 4K flip through. I'll do it with pleasure. Always with my flip throughs. I do explain about the deck a little bit in the beginning. Like the buckets in this deck is the suit of cups. Look at eight of cups, eight of buckets. Yeah, this is incredible. I should do a reading, an example reading with this deck. It will be very interesting. Mama of Buckets. That's the Queen of Cups. Papa of Buckets. Look at 
you want to see this deck guys shall I go on to the end six of spray cans this is the six of swords look at the eight of swords imprisoned in a shopping cart incredible look at this ten of spray cans this is the ten of swords the fact that it's a kid social media has turned everyone to a kid right bullshit has become so important to people all right i think i'll better do a flip through of this deck than showing all the cards to you guys in this video because i have another nine amazing decks to show you guys all right so this was the banksy tarot next is the story medicine tarot animal woman second edition this deck these are the bags this deck is so trippy and spiritual this is the most spiritual deck i own i might have other decks that are perceived more spiritual by others but to me this is the most spiritual at the end of the day spirituality is a very personal experience and i can't put it into words what i get out of this deck i can't put it into words what's happening in this deck but i know it so well in my heart it's exactly like a psychedelic trip that you can't put into words you can't put into words what you learned and what you've experienced I would love to know if any of you guys have this deck I would really love to know please write for me what is your experience with this deck I've never done a reading with this deck for anyone but myself. I can't even imagine what to tell them <laughs> if I pull any of these cards. And it's beautiful. I love the artwork. I mean, visually, the color palette, the depictions, everything, everything. I absolutely love everything about this deck. So this was my second pick. The Story Medicine Tarot, Animal Woman. And next is the Naked Heart Tarot by Gillian C. Wild. This deck made it to this only 10 video because of many reasons. One main reason is the artwork. These are the backs which I love, I have edged it myself. So the artwork is my thing. This is one of my favorite artworks on all the decks that I've seen. That's how much I like this, everything about it. The color palette of this deck the animal energy, the esoteric vibes of this deck. And the other reason is that it works like a dream. This is my number one divinatory deck. It tells me what will happen all the time. It tells me what will happen in the future. That's why I don't work with it as much as I would like to. It happened a few times that it warned me about the negative outcome of something that I wanted to do and I ignored the warning and went ahead and did what I wanted to do and got burned so bad. 
I can't say I have a negative experience or negative feeling towards this deck because I definitely don't. I actually really appreciate the magical capability of this deck. I'm just avoiding it unless I really want to take into serious consideration whatever it predicts. Then I will do a reading with it. Otherwise, I won't. But it's a shame actually because I love it. Also, the cardstock. Some of these cardstock are just. This is butter. Love, love, love this deck so much. The fool. Okay, so oh, the high priestess. So this was my third pick. Number four is the Luminous Void Tarot created by Laura Zospen. This deck. Fluid and intuitive. It has such a luxe feel. I love the backs, the gilding, the feel of the cards, the oval shape. The feminine vibes of this deck. The white space. Beautiful use of watercolor. King of Cups. This deck is so intuitive. It frees up my intuition completely. It charges my intuition and creativity. The High Priestess. At the same time, it is very elemental and numerological, symbolic. It has so much to offer. Watercolor is one of my favorite painting styles. About this deck, Queen of Swords, Death. I love everything from A to Z about this deck. And it has such a luxurious feel into it, but it's not over the top. It's the exact right amount of all the good things in the right combination, two of swords. So this was my fourth pick, the Luminous Void Tarot. My fifth pick is the El Goliath Tarot. I don't use the box anymore because it's awful. The guidebook is amazing though. This is my shadow work deck. But look at the artwork. I don't need to say anything about this deck. I don't need to bring any reason why I chose this deck in my top 10. The take on each tarot card. Like this is the star, justice, the dives of equality. I love this artwork, the three of swords. It communicates the shamanic and raw energy of animals and plants and nature. The star seed. It has a few extra cards. This deck passes on a very specific feel.
introduces you to the spirit of all these animals and elements and plants. The quality of the cardstock is the highest quality that is ever possible till today. So I would never let go of this deck, ever. And this was my fifth pick. The El Goliath Tarot. Next is the Oracle deck, the Illuminated Earth Oracle. This is the very first indie deck that I ever bought. I did edge it in this gold. I have used this deck so many times. The quality, I remember the first time when I bought this deck, how happy I was with it. And it wasn't that expensive, it was like 45 euros. Some mass market decks cost that much nowadays. I picked this deck for so many reasons. Artwork, of course. I am a very visual person. Artwork and the color palette and everything is extremely important to me. And this deck is so earthy it's like the El Goliath's way of looking at animal spirit like the same way of looking the same angle of connecting but this time on earth it's again very shamanic and spiritual very raw and this deck pairs so well with so many other decks and above all of that the keywords are so incredible multiverse balance anguish attachment childhood moon blocked Air, patience, tempest, gifts, vulnerability, accomplishment, erosion, you see, mystery. So this is definitely if I had to have only one oracle deck, it would be this one. That's how much I like it. Done by Claire Mac, 2018. Wow, five years ago I bought my very first indie deck. Interesting. <laughs> maybe I'm mistaking though. This is what I think right now, but maybe I will come across a deck in my collection that is an indie deck and I've bought it way before 2018. All right, now we have the She-Wolf Tarot. I picked this deck for many reasons. One is that it is so unique, irreplaceable deck. Look at the gilding. It's this dirty pink gilding. The color palette. Okay, this deck. With its urban 70s vibes. It's incredible color palette. The artwork. It's a mixture of Egyptian shamanism and even Native American shamanism with Hebrew letters and Kabbalistic symbols. 
it's the perfect combination of all the great things. Things that I like. I do use this deck only with the guidebook. I never read it without the guidebook because the guidebook helps so much. The guidebook helps you get a lot more out of this. You see it even has like these Aztec energies. But mostly Egyptian. I really recommend using this deck with the guidebook. It adds so much to your reading. So, the most important reason for this deck being in my collection is that it is very irreplaceable. There is no other tarot deck that is even similar to this. It's just very unique. And I love it. I love the artwork. And next is the Future Ancestor Tarot. With this beautiful backs I've done the edging this is my grandma energy this is my number one healing deck I love the artwork as I was saying, I am very visual and I need to love the artwork. And with all the pics that I showed you today, and with 99% of the decks in my collection, I'm in love with the artwork. If I don't like the artwork, I cannot buy the deck, I cannot work with the deck. I just cannot, no matter how good the deck is. And actually this tag was very challenging for me because when I was trying to choose out of all my indie decks, I realized that strangely, I like most of my indie decks exactly the same amount. <laughs> this was a new discovery for me. That's why I love participating in these tags. And also watching all of the tarot tubers, VRs and tags so much. There is always so many new discoveries and realizations in the process. So this was the future ancestor tarot as my eighth pick. My ninth pick is the reclaim oracle. This little deck, the size of it, it's just the perfect size. It's not that small, it's larger than a bridge deck, but smaller than most oracle decks. It has so many cards in it, I think 88. I love the bags, I love the cardstock, the texture of the cardstock. This is the gilding. I have told you guys that I'm a psychotherapist and I use many of my decks for my clients. I use this deck often for my clients but also for myself. I let them pick 8 or 10 cards. I let my clients go through the whole deck and pick 8 or 10 cards. And then we talk about each card, why they picked it. And because it's like eight or ten cards, it will take always a few sessions, but when we discover so much. This fantastic little deck of cards has the power of tapping into the deepest, most forgotten part of our subconscious. It reveals so many things. And the creator of this deck, 
I really appreciate this level of caring and paying attention to detail because the quality of everything is absolutely fantastic. The cardstock, the gilding, the size of the deck, the depictions and how they go with the titles of each card. It is like a journey. I would definitely need this deck if I had only 10 indie decks. This would be definitely one of them. Without a doubt. Perseverance. <laughs> Amazing deck. So this was my number 9. My last deck is the Northern Animal Tarot because this deck is my soul deck this is the first edition my favorite edition these are the beautiful bags I have done the edging myself with the first edition the colors are more muted the other two editions are much brighter but exactly because the colors are more muted it feels organic and it has a scent the cardstock is like the highest quality cardboardy cardstock that is very well bendable and shuffleable and it just feels great in your hands I love the depictions I love the energy of these guys in the deck every single animal I connect so deeply with every single one of them I love this deck as much as I would love a pet and this deck the way it communicates with me the way it came to me because I was after it I was trying to find it after it was out of print and it came to me in a miraculous way I know this particular deck is for me it was meant to be with me and if I can only keep one indie deck that would be this one so I'm finishing with this deck and I hope you enjoyed watching my video if you like my videos don't forget to subscribe to my channel I would really appreciate that and I hope to see you in my next videos let's not finish with three of swords and not with the devil we finish with high priestess